Okay, we'll we'll take any questions now that might have. Yes. No. What do you, this bill has come up before. What makes this year different? I mean, it's always died in the Senate. What makes this year different in terms of your hopes for passage? Well, um, you know, step to the mic, please, Pastor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I think um, you know we're going to keep bringing this bill up until it does pass. And so this is just part of our long-term strategy to make Virginia a safer place. So we're very pleased this year that um, Senator Devilites Davis has introduced this bill for us. And um, we hope to get a fair hearing and, and a good vote on it. How many years has it been introduced? Um, five, I think. I'd like to add um, to something that Jim has just said. When I was in my second year here in the House of Delegates, I passed expanded prescription authority for the nurse practitioners, and it was the 11th year they'd been trying to get that legislation through. So for um, legislation that doesn't sit well with people over time, I think that when you are able to year after year come back and, and you have changing faces in the legislature year after year, um, but you have a, you're allowed, you can grow your advocacy group and they have more time to get to know their legislators during the interim and to talk with them when we're not in session and things aren't so hectic. Um, after a while you can change minds. And I will also say we've had a rash of, of school killings this past year. Since the last time this legislation um, came up before the legislature during this past year in other states we've had several incidents with kids going onto school grounds and, and killing. Um, other school children. We've also had an incident in Northern Virginia where we had a young man come into um, onto the grounds of one of our police facilities and shoot and kill two of our um, police detectives in Fairfax County. Um, as I indicated, we're seeing an increase in violent crime. We're seeing an increase in these kinds of crimes. And I think that as you see an increase in crimes and the press is reporting of them, it certainly increases the percentage of citizens that want to see this kind of legislation. You just heard that 84 percent of the citizens of Virginia support this legislation. And as public opinion increases for any legislation, then the public puts more and more pressure on their legislators to pass that um, legislation. And then I, I think over time it, it, it has a better chance of passing. What is the source of the um, Southeast Research Southeast um, Institute of Research here in Richmond, Virginia. That report right here. Is Virginia alone in this loophole? Are there other states that there are, there are 18 states that have closed the gun show loophole. One is, uh, for example, is Colorado. Um, the guns that were used in the Columbine High School massacre came from a gun show. And um, the year after that information came out, the state legislature there passed a, a bill to close the gun show loophole. So there are 18 states overall that have done that. Is it, would, there be a, would there be a financial aspect to this bill? Would, would it negatively affect gun shows? Um, I think it costs $2 to do a background check. I think uh, um, you guys might know, but somebody can charge as much as $5 for, um, so you know, you're paying four or $500 for a gun. An extra $5 isn't that much. It's $2 for the background check, $5 if it's out of state, but then the dealer has to keep records with him for like 20, 25 years. So it is an impact to the dealer. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Any other questions from the press? Great. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you all so much for being here. We appreciate thank it. You.